In the tranquil setting of this 19th century country mansion, less than 20 miles from the heart of London, a team of BBC engineers have been helping to plan what can best be described as a revolution. A revolution, that is, in communication, and one that will reach straight into the home through that familiar piece of furniture, the television set. What's involved is a program system of an entirely new kind, for this one has been designed quite deliberately to put the ultimate power into the hands of every individual member of the viewing audience. The power, that is, to choose not just which part of the program you want to watch, but also when. And it's all done at the touch of a button. CFACTS, a name manufactured from seeing facts. And although the word is as yet unlikely to be a familiar one to the casual window shopper, there isn't much doubt about the interest aroused whenever the two-year experimental service operated by the BBC has been on public view. Up until now, though, television sets able to receive the new service have been measured in tens rather than hundreds. This will be changing all the time. Unless the financial uh, right. the, the, the index the, is changed. If the index changes, it can be updated more or less instantly. Oh, can it? There have been regular seven days a week transmissions since September 1974, just one week after the government sanctioned a full scale experiment and less than two years after CFAX was first announced. And so, the corporation's national television headquarters in West London has become the home also of push-button instant information. In a specially built newsroom on the seventh floor, an embryonic CFAX editorial unit has taken shape under the guidance of a journalist editor, Colin McIntyre. Alongside him, a group of pioneers have started to turn this fledgling into a new form of journalism, which, for all its reliance on electronics and computer technology, takes its base from the old-fashioned written word. Comparison with print doesn't end there. CFAX sub-editor Ian Morton-Smith. Like any news service, CFAX depends largely for its output on news agencies. Here we have a teleprinter from the Press Association. And here we have the BBC's own news service, general news service at Broadcasting House. The sub-editor, when he wanted to get some news, would tear off the paper and then walk over to the visual display unit, which is simply a television monitor linked electronically to a typewriter keyboard, and then onto the computer. And what I'm going to do now is to update the news headlines. So first of all, I have to ask the computer to display the news headlines page. This part at the top here is in fact graphics, which is not displayed on this particular monitor, but it doesn't actually interfere with what I'm going to do. Having done that, I sort out the headline that I'm going to alter. This one is in fact about a fire in Hampshire where hundreds of firemen and soldiers are fighting a blaze that covers two square miles of heathland. So first of all, I'm going to change the time. And then I go down and overtype this particular headline. Then I pick out a particular word, which is of interest, and put it in colour, just to give it a little bit of interest. And then when I've done that, I check through it to make sure I haven't made any mistakes, and press the transmit button to tell the computer that the page is now ready to go back into the magazine. And this is what the headlines page looks like on an ordinary domestic television receiver. You can see here that the, what the graphics look like. Up at the top here, we have the page number. This rolling number here is the page which is going through the magazine at any one given moment. And here we have the date and uh, an electronically controlled clock, which is from the computer. If we select page 101, we get to the CFAX index. You can see here we have headlines on page 102, Home News on 103, Sport, Racing, the Financial Times Index. And over here we have sub-indices for all the other types of information that CFAX has to offer. The present output of CFAX is roughly 50 pages, but we have the facility to go up as high as 100 pages. That 100 pages constitutes what we call a magazine, and we could put out one magazine on BBC One 
and a totally different magazine on BBC Two. A good example of a CFAX information page is the air travel news on page 113. Again, we have the slight pause for access time while this running number reaches 113. When that number corresponds with that, the page will appear like that. This is what we call a cycling B page. And here we have four sub-pages which appear on a set time scale. These times are preset by the visual display unit operator uh, through the computer. Another example of a CFAX page is page 115, which is the weather map. And here we can draw a map of Great Britain using our graphics facility. It should be coming up just about now. Here we use different colours for different weather conditions, so you can see at a glance uh, the weather conditions in your area. Another type of CFAX page is the news flash. We can superimpose important information over the top of a picture, like this. This little box here is constructed on the visual display unit, and then we just type the information into the box and send it out on network. But the viewer at home would be able to program his set so that these sorts of news flashes came up automatically, and then when he'd seen them, he just presses the button on this control unit to get it to vanish. A similar sort of page to that is the subtitle page, which again is constructed in the little box at the bottom of the screen, like that. These sort of pages could be used for subtitling for deaf people or indeed in foreign languages. CFAX can use up to six colours plus white and also we have a flashing facility like that. The graphic designs which you've seen so far are made up with shapes like this on a special visual display unit and all these shapes correspond to letters and to numbers. The graphics which I told you about just now can be made up using this special black and white graphic visual display unit and simply by typing letters which correspond to graphic shapes we can build up pictures and words like this. And when I've got the design finished completely, I just press a button and punch a tape which would then be fed into the computer that. CFAX and Oracle, sometimes referred to by the generic term of teletext, have come a long way in a short time, especially since the manufacturing and broadcasting sides agreed on a common specification so that it's possible to receive both services on the same television set. But even in what's regarded still as being a very early stage in its development, it's quite clear that teletext won't be regarded as having arrived until domestic situations like these are happening en masse. By the time that does happen, the decoder should be hidden inside and not added on to the box in the corner. And it'll be possible to flick out of ordinary television programmes through individual CFAX pages and then back again without trailing any flexes and also without getting out of your own comfortable armchair. But undoubtedly, the ultimate success of CFAX probably depends on one thing, apart, that is, from the obvious matter of economics, and that's content appeal. Will news headlines, business information, consumer matters, travel, sports results and the weather remain as the basic staple diet of the 100-page magazines of the future? Or will CFAX also provide, shall we say, company accounts, condensed books, plays, television programmes and so on? Could CFAX also forge tremendous links between minority groups such as the deaf and cooperate in educational facilities like the Open University? And what about a Eurofax, especially as the United Kingdom standard has already proved itself potentially exportable? But then, going to the other extreme, there's the question of miniature CFAX operations by feeding in groups of pages of a purely local interest. That would open up all sorts of possibilities, like 
providing information on suburban train timetables, and even what was showing at the local cinema. But really, all that is just the beginning. Chess, bridge, crossword puzzles and many other games appear to lend themselves to the format of the television screen. And looking even further ahead, there's the really exciting possibility of using a domestic television receiver as a home computer terminal. In fact, one day, using yet another piece of home equipment, the telephone, it's quite likely that I shall be able to dial my local bank and ask for a private, televised view of my financial position. Far-fetched? Well, hardly.